Hello Acolytes and welcome back to my channel. I'm After Plague and today I am working on an illustration. This was sort of just something, I wanted to draw something a little bit dreamy, but not painterly. I'm, I'm constantly in this struggle as an artist deciding between illustrative and painterly illustrations in, in my own process. And the thing that I find is that I enjoy looking at more painterly work, but I enjoy working on more illustrative work. So I'm just not really the target audience for my own artwork. But sometimes I feel like illustrative work uh, limits me to a certain degree in terms of feeling, in terms of not necessarily subject, but just when I think of dreamy, I think of something really soft and smudged and, you know, definitely more painterly. So I was doing a bit of a challenge with myself to see if I could come up with something that was both dreamy and illustrative with a lot of hard lines and hard edges. So I had this idea for a woman blowing bubbles, almost like she's blowing bubble gum. But inside some of these bubbles, inside the larger of these bubbles, are little koi fish. So I started out this illustration by sketching that out. I figured three was probably a good amount of koi fish, but I wanted to fill in the background with more bubbles to make it more atmospheric. I'm very happy with how her sketch, her anatomy turned out. I think those hands are some of the best hands I've done in a while. So I'm very, very pleased with those. She's definitely based off of a, a reference that I found on Pinterest. I should honestly make my reference Pinterest boards public so you guys would be able to see them and potentially use some of my references for your own artwork. Obviously, I'm, I'm very okay with that. Something that I thought would add to the dreaminess of the illustration and give it a bit more of a floaty feel was giving her hair that really wrapped around her and had volume and and seemed to be floating and filling that space. So I spent a really long time doing this really intricate hair, which is one of my favorite things to do illustratively. I, I find it quite fulfilling, even though it takes forever because I do a lot of, you know how people say don't draw like every strand of hair? I don't, but I do a lot of subdividing of pieces of the hair, if you know what I mean. Like hair is made up of chunks of shapes, but I like to subdivide it into a lot of smaller chunks to imply the motion of the hair or, you know, give it some more texture, but that obviously takes a really long time. So definitely one of the things that takes me the most time in any illustration is sketching and inking the hair. I'm sure I could find a faster way to do it. Ugh, I don't know, I'm always trying to get faster. This illustration took me about six hours, I believe. And I actually streamed most of it on my Twitch. If you'd like to sort of get sneak peeks of what I'm working on, and also just a little bit more personal conversation with me, please go follow me over on my Twitch. It's After Plague, just like my YouTube channel. I stream sporadically these days. <laughs> I sort of just stream whenever I have the energy to, and whenever I have art stuff that I need to be working on. Um, because a lot of other days I spend exclusively working on administrative stuff, like updating my shop. Shop link, oh my gosh, plug the shop. It's afterplagueart.myshopify.com. Shop link on the screen now. Put the, put, the, put the shop link on the screen. It's on the screen. <laughs> I'm doing some updating of my shop this week. So hopefully if you go visit it, you will find that it's a little bit easier to navigate. I'm also finally getting prints up on my shop, which I'm very, very excited about because currently I sell stickers and some like print on demand items like mugs and stuff like that but I know a lot of people are interested in just straight up art prints so I'm getting that connected this week so you guys should be able to get some art prints if you would like this image is going to be up there as an art print maybe my first one that I put on the site so yeah go visit that go go visit the link <laughs> what was I talking about though I remember now I was talking about my streaming schedule so yeah I, I stream probably I'm gonna be trying to stream three times a week going forward so notifications on if you want to actually hear what I'm streaming. But yeah, I always post about it on my Instagram and my Twitter. Anyway, I was really interested in smooth lines and line variation for this piece. I thought that that was pretty important. It's something that I enjoy about these illustrative pieces that I do. I do a lot of intense black line art 
And I thought maybe for this piece, if I lightened it up a bit, if I did like a clipping mask over the line art at the end and changed the color, that was originally the plan, but I ended up liking it so much that I just kept it as is. So yeah, you'll, you'll have to tell me if you think I should have colored the line art or not. I, it was a decision I was going back and forth on, but with the background, I felt like the character needed the line art in order to stand out. So like I said, the hair takes me forever. Anytime I'm drawing a character, anytime I'm drawing a female character specifically, the hair just takes me ages and ages and ages. One of the hairs that has taken me the absolute longest to do is the like curly haired color palette challenge that I did a couple months ago. I'll put it in the iCard if you wanna watch that. That took me, I don't know, three hours. It was so long, but it is actually something I find quite meditative and enjoyable. So it's not something I want to cut out of my process. And again, it's it goes back to that whole painterly thing. Hair is something that's very difficult for me to paint. I don't understand it very much. I've been trying to get into painting as well as illustration. And I've also been trying to get back into physical painting. So I just got, you know, a black and a white and I'm trying to figure out painting in grayscale because maybe it would make more sense to me painting in person that I could then transfer those skills into digital painting. I'm not sure if that's reasonable train of thought, but it's the train of thought that I'm on. So I've been, I've been trying to work on some paintings just on little nine by 12 uh, canvas board, which I know isn't the best, but you know, when you're just practicing, it's not crazy either. I might post that on my Instagram. I haven't been filming the process just because I'm quite embarrassed about, uh, <laughs> about not understanding what I'm doing, but it's okay. I really enjoyed painting in these bubbles. I found a process that I liked for painting and coloring them that really, it felt illustrative and it added to the atmosphere. And uh, I actually am putting up a tutorial about it on my TikTok. My TikTok is also After Plague. I hit my microphone, sorry. But if you want a more in-depth detailed tutorial about how that was done, uh, go check it out on my TikTok. But I will explain it briefly here. Um, it's just you can see a better example of it on my TikTok. These little fish, I enjoy drawing fish. I've drawn fish and fins a few times before. I always find it a bit difficult to make the fins have a sense of transparency or like loose and flowiness when I'm illustrating instead of painting. So that is something that I find a little bit limiting. Something else that I wanted to try with this piece, because I was like, I have a vague color palette in mind, but it's not actually really, it, it's not, jumping out at me basically um so i thought i will paint this in grayscale so i can get my values correct you know and then i'll use a gradient map on procreate and i tried it and i just really didn't like the results that were coming with the standard gradient maps i know that people have like gradient map sets that you can get on like gum gum road gum gum tree gum road Gumroad. <laughs> and, you know, I would have gone and looked for those, but I was actually doing this on stream, so I didn't want my stream viewers to have to wait for me. So I ended up deciding on color palette that was, I just picked like a sunsetty color palette that had the color I was, colors I was picturing in my head, but in a way that was a little bit more cohesive that I could work with, you know, because that's the main thing when I pick my own colors. I feel like they're not quite as cohesive as they could be. It's something I need to practice, but yeah, they're, they're just not as cohesive as they could be. So... Initially, I started out just doing like a color layer over the black and white layer that I had done, but I didn't like that as much. So I was drawing on this blue and orange color palette because those are complementary, with the oranges being like slightly pink and the blues being slightly purple. And I actually really like that. I think it turned out quite wonderful. The other thing that I don't love in this piece, and I'm not even sure if people would really notice or care, I don't love her top. Like I had drawn her and then I was like, oh shoot, she's not wearing a shirt. And then I was like, do I want to take the time to like draw in a shirt and find a design and blah, blah, blah. Or do I just want to give her this little bandeau top? So I gave her like a little tube top. <laughs> and I know that's like the laziest thing you could do. I tried to zhuzh it up a little bit in the coloring, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling it, but I just, I didn't want to make the shirt more complicated than it needed to be considering her hair situation. I started out shading with this red and I thought, oh, you know, if I make it an interesting layer style, it could come up with some interesting colors. And it did come up with this purple, but I just wasn't feeling it. So I changed it to a blue shading just to give a little bit more contrast. Yeah, I just darkened it up and, uh, and changed it. I still think it could work, just maybe not with this illustration. Mm. 
I don't know, I'm unsure. I, I like the blue though, because once I did that, I was like, oh, I can make it look oceany. I can make it look like water. So I started adding in all of these lighter highlights just all over the place, trying to make her hair look a little bit wet. And I, I really liked how that turned out. I shaded her arms with that same red color that I had used to shade her hair, and I think it looks a lot better on her skin than it does on her hair, so I'm pleased with that decision. I believe that's also the same color that's on um, her lips. I didn't keep it this level of intensity, I lowered it a little bit, and then used a soft brush on the cheeks, the knuckles of the fingertips, and the elbows. I was trying my best not to use soft brushes in this illustration, but I think it adds something to the skin when you add in that sort of soft... Uh, appearance. It makes the skin look a bit more real. I also added a little highlight on the edges of some of the skin, especially some of the fingers, and I, I like how that looked as well. Uh, and then her nails, I did a brief shade and stuff on them, but I decided I was going to go in and change them a little bit at the end. I also added in a gradient on her hair so it's darker at the tips, just to provide some variety, and I think that looks really good. The other thing that I did to her hair, and I don't know why I did this, I was sort of just going with the flow, I was I was enjoying it, but I started adding little stars to her hair, like little dot stars and also like bright stars from a star pack that I have. I think it's called CK Stars if you're wondering what the brush pack is. And you know, little like star stamps. And I really like how it turned out. It decided to add stars to the background in the end to tie her hair to the background as well. And I also added some of those shiny stars on the bodies of the fish. And I really like how that turned out as well. I colored in these fish like koi where they're mostly white, but they have the sort of orangey color on them. And then I also added in that orangey color to her eyes as makeup, as well as some variation with the white so she really matches the fish. And then to make the fish shiny, I gave them a variety of scales. I have a, a free scale brush as well. Don't know the name of that one. If I can find it, I'll put it in the description. But I gave them some like yellow scales and then some brighter yellow scales. And then I went in with some like pure white and touched up the edges of the scales so they were really glowing. And then the final touch I did was go and add in those like really bright stars to make them really pop and really stand out. I'm really happy with how these guys turned out as well. This honestly, this piece is probably one of my favorite that favorites. <laughs> I'm getting excited. It's one of my favorites that I've done in months. And I, uh, I had a really good time working on it. Once I got into the coloring stage, I was just going with the flow. I was enjoying myself. The bubbles. I will do a quick tutorial for how I did them here, but if you want a more in-depth tutorial, please again see my TikTok. I will post a, a full in-depth tutorial with just one bubble to show you how I did it. But firstly, I started out with a white brush that had line variation, line thickness, pen pressure. And most of my bubbles are thin on the top and then thicker on the bottom to give them a bit of weight. Then on one half of the bubble, I do like a dark purple color. On the other half, I do a really desaturated purple color. And then in the middle, a sort of brighter pinky color. Now that would change depending on the color of the background that you're working on. That, that would absolutely change because that is the reflected color on the surface of the bubble. Then on the like lower edge of the bubble, I do a really, really light blue highlight, I guess, <laughs> just to make that part of the bubble look thicker. Then on the surface of the bubble, I take a desaturated purple, and again, this would change based off the environment, and that same brush that has pen pressure, and I add this sort of, these lines as shading, kind of, and I also like to add some smaller, shorter, thinner ones as some variation. Then on the top of the bubble, I do like a white oblong shape, erase out parts of it to make it look like it's curved along the surface of the bubble because it's curving towards you, right? So I erase out parts of that and then lower the opacity to about 70%. And the final thing I do on these bubbles is a pure white hard highlight. I like to put it inside the areas that are purple, not all of them, but you know, a lot of them, and then add in some, some round highlights, some round circles, and some lines as well. I also like to add in smaller line variations with these. So that's how I did the bubbles. <laughs> I think they turned out amazing. I really think they turned out super good. I'm definitely going to be using this again. And then finally, I did the background. I decided to do like a cloudy sunsetty background because that's what I picked the color palette from. The clouds, I don't think are accurate. I think they should be opposite, like they should get darker as they go higher up. I just did it like this for the contrast. You know, it looks better to have the lighter clouds contrast against the darker background. And then I used that same sort of hard brush to add in a lot of highlights. Again, I think these would be coming from the bottom of the clouds and not the tops, 
but I don't really care. <laughs> I don't know if you as a viewer care about accuracy like that. Maybe you do, I don't know. And then of course, the, the final thing I did was take all of those like star brushes and the light stars that I had been using and adding them into the background of the sky. So yeah, this is pretty much the, the finished illustration. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like, please leave me a comment, please share, please engage my stuff. You know, and of course subscribe. I, I can't believe that's the one I forgot. Please subscribe. I try and post videos every Saturday and uh, three shorts a week. Follow me on all my social media to see what I'm getting up to. I am After Plague on TikTok, Twitch, and Instagram, and I am after underscore plague on Twitter. Somebody stole my name, if you would believe it. <laughs> also, please go to my shop. Check out what I've got going on there and let me know if you want to see anything added to my shop. I'll try my best to, to get it on there. Um, yeah, thank you again so much for watching, and I hope you survive this post-plague world.